Welcome back to the Conquest Champions Battle Report League. This time, it's Season 2. In the Conquest Champions Battle Report League, I've taken 8 tournament veterans and pitted them against each other in an elimination style tournament. If you want to get the full rundown on every player and all of their lists, check out the video linked down below. In this battle, we have Geordie, the Beard, leading his Easterlings, going up against David, the Lord of Lorien, leading the Lothlorien army. Let's get straight into this game. So we've got the Easterlings again with a bit more hero focus, big pike block, uh, should be pretty solid. So Galadrim are kind of one of the armies I didn't want to see, because they've got fight six on their base troops. I say base troops, 12 points, they're cheap as cheap. Um, so they actually kind of nerf my heroes, the whole point of them is they're fight six, they'll outfight anyone. So, an awkward matchup, but depends how his numbers look. Oh, good day. I'm David. I've got the Gladrum Pike Horde. My game plan against Eastlings is I'm going to go pike to pike, shot to shot. Um, just line them up front to back, hope my fight six and my two handed weapons will carry straight through their front line. The Eastling Pike Block is lacking uh, two handed weapons, uh, which will hopefully give me the real edge uh, when we come to combat. So, apparently, I'm coming up against one of the newfangled heroes they've uh, come out with. I haven't looked at them in a whole lot of detail, so I guess we'll find out what it does, um, and hopefully what it does is die. In the Conquest Champions League, three scenarios are determined at random. Then, each player takes turn vetoing a scenario. This ensures it's balanced for everyone and makes for a much more interesting game. And our three randomly drawn scenarios were Heirlooms of Ages Past, Hold Ground and Command the Battlefield, all three Heirloom scenarios. Now, we're going to roll off to see who gets to veto one first. So let's see the roll. Three, four. Three to a four. So, Jordy, you have to veto first. Which one will you get rid of? I actually don't like heirlooms, so I'm just going to veto that. Given you've got a drum, I think you can spread out a whole lot faster than I can. Mm. So, let's play Wanda to the center. So I am vetoing the one that is not. All right, so the scenario is hold ground. And the table that we're playing on is the outskirts of the ruins of a Gondorian city. In the scenario Hold Ground, there is one objective in the center of the board that is worth the most points. There's also Maelstrom deployment, so it's a run into the center. You also get points for breaking the enemy and killing their leader. Conquest Champions League Season 2 is brought to you by the Kingdom of Saxonia Kickstarter. Here at Conquest Creations, we've been working on this project for a very long time now. The Kingdom of Saxonia is a line of STL files of miniature terrain perfect for your games in Middle-earth. These buildings are inspired by the architecture of the Saxons, the Vikings, and the Rohan. I'm so excited for you to see more of this project that's going to be launching at the end of August. And to celebrate the start of the Conquest Champions League Season 2, the very first building in this project is going to be available totally for free. You can find a link to it in the description of this video. So go and download it right now. There's going to be a lot more information coming out in future videos, so keep your eyes open. David won first turn priority, so yes. this is Maelstrom. Which warband you're on for uh, first? Seize the initiative. Uh, let's move on with Caliborn. So All right. Let's see where he's showing up. And one, not this turn. So he does not oh, arrive. Uh, and then I have a Heldia. You're going to get a double one. And it's got into <laughs> my pile of other dice. So oh, two. Two. Um, Mark it down. Uh, yeah, away from the trees. Let's go uh, this corner here. Okay. So because David rolled a 2 on that dice, that meant that Geordi got to decide where he placed his warband coming in from this Maelstrom deployment, anywhere on the north or south board edge. And the corner was a good idea, because that's as far away from the center as you can get, and that center is of course, the objective. So Geordi, that goes to your move. Cool, alright, can we get the jump on Cheeky Haldia? Uh, I didn't say who that was, but that was going to be Amdur. Alright, Amdur's not arriving. <laughs> alright, interesting. And... Rutabi. Alright, and Rutabi. On a two, so the exact same rolls that David got. Um, right. Are you going to spend any might on that? Nah. Alright, so David, that's your choice on the north or south board edge. Now, let's see. Rutabi's warband is looking bigger than Haldia's warband. Uh, so let's just put it over... This is a really interesting way to start with neither army's warlord on the battlefield. And in turn 1, David had a handful of shots, but they ended up doing nothing, so that takes us to turn 2. And turn 2's priority went to David. He moved this knight just half, so he has one bow shot at Geordie's Easterlings. That one shot can be really annoying. So rolling for Caliborn's Warband, let's see it, it's a 3. Now, if I boost that to a 
four. Come on right with those guys. Keep everybody beautifully together. That sounds like fun, actually. Let's do it. All right, so Kelleborn spent a point of might to come in on the north or south board edge. And Kelleborn came in first. Sentinel's going to show up. Mm -hmm. He's going to wander an inch that way. And he's going to be spooky at your banner bearer. So, courage test. Of the banner? Yes. Fails. He chooses not to move this turn. I got five inches left. So I'm going to just duck back here. And as David brings in the rest of his warband, for those of you who don't know, Sentinels have an ability that cause the enemy to take a courage test. If the enemy fails, then the Sentinel gets to choose how they move that turn. And now it goes into Geordie's move. He's got some tough decisions to make. So it's awkward I need to make my decision before I know if Ando's coming. If I knew he was arriving where I wanted, I would just bum rush this way, have Ando come in as well, and then we can get into a big scrap. But because I don't, I'm kind of having to like meet in the middle. So I'm going to try and move just this way as much as possible and, and hope that Ando is clever enough to come where he wants. Um, and additionally, I am actually going to put this drummer this way, in case Ando's forced over here, I might still be out of drum if he's forced to come in on that side. Now that Easterling drum is super powerful. It effectively gets to call a free heroic march with a range of 12 inches every turn, making your army fast. Alright, so big man himself has decided not to come in again. Alright, interesting. Uh -oh. Do you wish to spend any might? No, I would not. Okay. Geordie, you've got priority this turn. What's happening here? Well, I goosed and didn't put the drum in range of my banner. So he's going to take the long way around. I'm just going to move six. But we are drumming and uh, everyone's going to be speeding somewhat towards the middle. We're going to try and hide behind this as well to soak up some arrows for us. All right. And now is it time to see if Amda arrives? It might be a little too late to get any real work done. So we just want him to arrive safely. And on the five, he is arriving. Now it's good that Amda finally made it onto the battlefield. This is definitely later than Geordie was hoping for, but with that drum he can still move really quickly and link up both sides of his force. And here you can see an overview of the table where while Geordie's army is split, so is David still. This does take us into David's movement though. Okay, I've moved my sentinel up to here. That's within 12 inches of this fellow here, who has the move to wander within charge range of a Caliborn if he should decide to break formation. Yeah. So, he's a very brave boy. He does not. He passes. Sentinel will just finish its move there, and these fellows will advance. And David used the rest of his movement just pushing forwards, but making sure not to run straight at Geordie, but to link up both sides of his army. And with that movement done, we go back into priority, which goes to David, and Geordie did declare he's using the drum. David is using his sentinels to perfection here. He's finagling this measurement so that he can get that sentinel within 12 inches of the banner bearer. And then he's going to make that banner bearer take a courage test. If he fails, that banner moves 9 inches. Only courage 3. He no. fails. And he wanders out under the influence of the drum. You may move him 9 inches. So he moves 1 to the side and he wanders 8 forwards for reasons that I'm sure feel good to him. <laughs> That banner is such an important part of Geordie's army because it's a massive force multiplier, especially against these high fight elves. And look, it's not a good day to be this banner bearer. David's done the right thing by targeting it and taking it down here. With the rest of his move, David just pushed his forces together to make one phalanx. Uh, bad news bears, that banner is one dead gentleman. Uh, everyone is in the drum, so I'm not allowed a counter charge here. We've given up on that gentleman, and Caliborn can still throw a combat to swing numbers this way. But we're just going to try and get the jump on Haldir. And no surprise from the rest of Geordie's army, just making a beeline for the battle lines. And in the shooting phase, David managed to take down this guy's horse. Whip. So into the combat phase, David, what's happening with this combat? So I'm calling a heroic combat here because all the Easterlings went that way, and I need to follow them. Uh, the pikemen can't unfortunately move, so Caliborn just goes an inch across and five. Wax him sort of right here, squaring off against this dragon general person. And this is what the board is looking like at the end of turn. As you can see, next turn is going to be a big one, so let's see the priority roll. Two! Four. Two to four. That'll so it hard. goes to four the elves. <laughs> so, first up, do you wish to use your drum this turn? Uh, I do wish to use my drum. Yes. And I do wish to call a heroic move. Okay. Uh, I'm guessing Ritabi's calling that? Yes. 
How dare we try it then? <laughs> Alright, so both have called a heroic. Let's see the roll off. One, two, three goes evil. Four, five, six goes good. That's David, you've priority. got priority, so let's see it. And That's that evil. is a two, so uh, going to evil. Which and Jordy used this opportunity to run straight in David's line, but staying over on this side. He wants to stay away from Celeborn getting into his heroes if possible. So, he built a thin line of Easterlings and he's focused heavily on this side with Haldia. And Rutabi and Haldia are fighting against each other. In David's move, he was just addressing his line, making sure he's optimized for taking on the brunt of the Easterlings. We've got Haldia where we want him, but what we have to stop is Celeborn from heroic combating and rescuing him. So, the guys under the influence of the drum are going to run up and do some body blocking work, including the drummer himself, who's not allowed to charge, unfortunately, but he's just going to blitz all the way up there and block some stuff. This is a great move by Geordi. Even though those models can't charge, doesn't mean they're not helpful still. And you can see Amda's warband has closed the gap really quickly, and they'll be in the fight next turn. And here's our board after movement. As we can see, geordie has got the center but there's a lot of elves against just half of his army. So that's going to go into the combat phase. Does anyone have any heroics to declare? Do you wish to use any more? Uh, not at present, no. Um, I'm fight six, you're fight six. Uh, I've got an album blade. Mm -hmm. uh, you can copy me though on a three plus. So I'm not calling unless you do. Nope. In that case, let's fight some fights. And the first fight of the fight phase went in favor of the Dragon Acolyte, who's totally swamped, magically winning that fight, striking blows. Who's he going against? Uh, I'll go with both the archers, because they're defense five, needing fives. Cheeky two wounds for me. Oh, all right, Nothing, fair enough. but he pushes them that. back. Wow. Great start from the Easterlings with that Dragon Acolyte defeating Celeborn and pushing him back. We had a cavalry just knock down an Easterling. A couple of Easterlings get pushed back and slain. Some more Easterlings again pushed back, which is what Jordi was expecting, but he finished by taking down a Galadrim Cord Guard. Haldia versus Rutabi. Let's go, Rutabi. Bang! Five to start us off. I got a six. Oh, he's too good. One point of might to make it a roll. I do need to kill you quicker than not, but. This point of might for a 33% chance just isn't worth it. And Haldia failed to wound Rutabi. Geordi really wanted to win that, but he made the right call, saving the might. This turn, priority went to the Easterlings. David's called a heroic move with Haldia, meaning that Rutabi can try to use her Master of Battle yeah, special Master rule. Battle, baby. And that is yep. a four, so Rutabi also calls a free heroic move. That goes to a roll off. So, one, two, three goes to the Easterlings, four, five, six goes to the Elves. We might need this one. We're in a bit of a pickle. Goes to the Easterlings. All right. So, Jordy, let's see the move. So, because it's my priority uh, and Rutabi has a straight shot at Haldir, I am actually going to call without me. So, Rutabi's doing her heroic alone, and then everyone's going to move as normal. Definitely on purpose. Amdor's in range of Haldir, so we're going to do a bit of a double team. Now, if Haldir calls a strike, I get to call two strikes. Well, one on a three up, but you know what I mean. And with the rest of Geordi's move, he's just addressing the battle line, making sure everything is good for his Easterlings to hopefully get some kills. David didn't have much movement because everything was tied up, so he's just adjusting his pikes around the back of his line. And this is what the board looks like after the movement phase. It's a massive clash of two pike walls, and we're going to see which one comes out on top. So that goes straight into the combat phase. Do we have any heroics to declare? How much might do you have on I have Eldia? One. One. And I've still got five. So you've got two mud on the board. Mm -hmm. um, I will have Amdo call a strike. So Amdo is calling it. Um, there's no point dying with mine on me, so I'll strike as well. So Amdo's down to two. Heldy yep. is out. Does Rutabi wish to copy for a three plus? That's a good point. She does not. So, interestingly, I think I will call with Rutabi. Mainly because if we win the combat, Amdo gets his point of might with Blood and Glory back anyway. So... It, Ideally, I'm not spending any might here, but obviously it could, could all go pear-shaped. The fight phase starts off with Haldia versus the two Easterling Lords. So... Strikes. And got the 10. Fight 9. And Haldia's the lower and fight And just value. because Rutabi got fight 10 as well. Currently on a 5. I got the 6. This will be Rutabi. Currently on a 3. And we have two friends. I've still got Banner, and I've still got Might on Andrew if yes. I have to, but I don't want to. Friends, and I'll Banner this one to Might. Um, Andrew, he got the six, Andrew's got the five. I am going to burn the Might to get the strikes on Haldir. Alright, so you have won the fight. 
Now, can Haldia make way in there? Uh, no, because All right. there's too many pikemen. So he will be trapped. And there is two. Two from Amda. Mm -hmm. And Rutabi. Rerolling every fail. Which oh. a few of them, but that's alright, we've got lethal. We'd and there we go. This Making the fate anyway. <laughs> glory. <laughs> Yes. And passes his fate. Nice. Unfortunately, Haldir is taken down. But David, what rule does Haldir have here? So he gets a strength four hit back against each of these fellows as he goes mm. down. So he let's put the wound. red against the leader, Amdur, and white against the uh, dragon general. And Haldir's final That's strike nice. was unfortunately not successful. And there is the first hero down. Uh, Easterlings are looking like they're in a good position now. A point of might back for Amdur, so he goes back up to two. And following that, Jordi took down a Galadrim knight, which has got to feel bad, and then pushed back two guards of Galadrim. Court, it's nice to win fights against them. Followed this by losing an Easterling, as well as losing the drummer. It's late in the game, so that drum doesn't really matter as much anymore. A few more Easterlings were pushed back, an Acolyte was slain, and another Easterling just pushed back. This is our battle after that combat phase, and priority just went to Easterlings right when Jordy needs it, and David has one point of might left on the board. David, do you think you're going to spend it so here? I have exactly one might point on Caliborn. He gets everyone in on this side of the wall. I would love a turn just to get this sorted out. <laughs> so, you know what, I'm calling it last might point to go for the move. Alright. Uh, if I win this, great. If I lose it, uh, We'll see how many sixes I can roll. In <laughs> uh, Rutabi Three stealing a cheeky master battle? No! All you right. got one might on Rutabi or two on Amdur? Yeah, it's interesting. Who do I spend it on? Because I will call a, a move. Yeah, I'll keep one on each, so I'll call with Amdur. On a one, two, three goes to Easterlings. All right. I think we need this to, to really get there. David's still definitely in it. His troops are much better than mine. Goes to the Elves. Goes to the Elves. All right. Yeah, so, David, fine. your move. Let's see where Kelleborn's going. He's going to just charge those two. Uh, but as he does, he's got some will points with him. So he's going to throw one of them, just while we're here, try and slow down Amder uh, with oh, forgot he has a lovely transfix. <laughs> I have no idea what I cast on, so we'll roll it and we'll find out. Three, I think. That's a five, five so that will, will be a cast. Pretty good. Do you wish to resist this one? Yeah. I do. I think Amder and Rital, we have to do the killing. Mm -hmm. I believe Amder's 3-3-1, three, three, so I'll spend yes. two. I'll bring you down to one, unless you can get some sixes. Yeah. So resisting a transfix? No. No, it's does not love it. Will. And he is transfixed. Okay, we want the two-handed weapon in against transfixed damn dirt. That just sounds fun. It's great that David is using the two-handed weapons on his elves. Oftentimes people really sleep on the ability to two-hand with an elven blade. But here it makes a lot of sense. They'll have the equal fight value but the elven blade advantage. Let's see if they can do some damage. Alright, we're going to do the coolest thing that these guys get to do. We're going to jump. Mm -hmm. Up here on a four plus, yep. and continue to charge. Excellent. Let's go. Hey ya! Got the six, Got the six anyway. anyway, but it's still important that yes. he would have passed on a four, so don't forget and just charge mm -hmm. those two. And after the movement phase, the clash of lines has begun. They've both been very careful about where they're putting their pikes to maximize their attacks, and that's going into the combat phase. The fight phase kicked off with two Easterlings just being pushed back by Guard of Gladden Court. This is important because it untrapped the other guard, but that other guard was slain anyway. Further across, the Easterlings lost another fight. Now, this makes sense that they're going to lose a lot of fights. They're fight four, and those Galadrim are fight six. Next, it goes into Rutabi's combat. That's the red one. I got the four. I got the six. Very nice. Friends on the six. Uh, we're both right. fight six. You have We've both got Elven Blade. Oh, you don't. Nah, Rutabi doesn't. Okay, doesn't. so... Tinky, Tinky, one or two. Oh, that's Elven. fine. The Elven Blade, Three, we'll... push him back. Elven Blade makes Elven the difference. Uh, reds plus one wound, stabbing. Yep. That's one wound, two, two wounds. Two wounds on Rutabi. You've got three wounds, two fate. Yeah, she'll pop them. Alright, so yeah, Rutabi takes wound. two wounds. Ouch. The fight phase continued into two Galadrim Court, just getting pushed back and then was followed by two Easterlings fighting just one elf with a pike, and they both went down. Now that's a big deal, because now there's a hole in Geordie's line that allows elves to get to that objective. And another Gladrim Court got pushed back. So Kelborn has lost because he two-handed. Got that too greedy shielded. there. All right, and that's turn. So okay. Geordie, how many casualties are you up to? Uh, I believe we're up to eight. Eight, All right. needing 13 dead. Alright, so still a ways off breaking, and David's only lost four models. So that goes in two. Next turn, let's see the priority roll. Hey, oh, yeah! Glory! Oh no, two. Six. Six. 
Uh, you got one mic left on each of the blokes? Yeah, so I will call a heroic move with... Yeah, let's just go with Tarby. Okay, she's out of mic. Yep. And that means Geordie's going first. Now, I don't think this was the most necessary heroic move to call, but it does give Geordie just a bit more control in the positioning, and hey, what else are you going to be using your mic for? This is really just giving him control over where the battle lines meet, and it means that elves aren't going to squeeze through that gap that they created last turn. Into David's move, Kelborn's going first. Geordie chose not to engage him because he didn't want to risk failing a terror check, and now he's just cast Transfix on a 6. So Geordie, are you going to try to resist that? Yeah, look, I forgot about the magic, so um, I should have charged him. Oh well. I will try and resist, and I'll just get a natty 6, and then I won't be punished for my mistake. Unfortunately not. So Heavy punish. <laughs> Amda is transfixed once again. And out of will. And out of will, and Kelleborn still got one. Yeah, that was a big mistake. Uh, so this guy is going to just jog up here and fight the fellow, so we'll have the two two attack guys balancing mm -hmm. up on this walkway. It's only fair. As he goes, um, he is going to try and scare off one of these pikemen at the back here. Yeah. Good to go. Eight. No. These pikemen do not scare easily, it seems. And after the movement phase, everything is just shimmied around. No heroics have been declared. Geordie has priority, so where are we going to start? Uh, we'll start with the one. Oh, there's a couple trap models, but we'll start with this trap model here. It's just him. He'll fight normally. Big three. Five. Take your... Into a... Or yours. Strength three. Come on, lads. Nothing. Now, even though David has lost a hero and is on the wrong side of the objective, Jordy is behind on kills, so it really helped when he started out this turn by taking down two more elves. That's a big deal, because he's only killed four before, he just increased that by 50%. Amdo lost his fight, but he was transfixed, so that makes sense, he just pushed back. And then Kelleborn went into his fight and failed to kill again, so he's really not getting the value that Kelleborn needs to. Another elf was pushed back, and the dragon called Acolyte was slain. Finally, a hopelessly trapped Easterling won his fight. Not what David wanted. And that's the end of the turn. The lines are spreading out a little bit. There are a few more casualties on the elven side, but it's still just a big grind in there. So let's see priority for next turn. One, six. And goes to the elves. Geordie, are you going to call anything? Look, this is awkward. I was supposed to win a priority somewhere. But I think I'm still meant to call it and just get the jump and try and clean up some more elves. Alright. So, Amdur's out of might? Yeah. So, does that put your whole army out of might, Jordy? Yeah, we're mightless across the board. Alright. It's all up to priority. Unless Amdur can get the wow. So, can we get some kills in here? Let's see it. Uh, so, I'm not going to... Oh, hopefully not going to make the same mistake. Amdur's going to go that banner again. We're going to get the banner kill. And we're going to try and fucking charge Kelleborn this time. Pass some courage test to charge Kelleborn. Oh, and he has done it. And with Geordie's move, he's really just pushing his line in and trying to get optimal matchups here. He doesn't want to be losing fight, he can't afford to lose many more models because he could break well before David does. And this is what it's looking like after the movement phase. Again, just the smashing of the lines going into combat. David gets to decide first this time, which is great for him because he's going to get quite a few traps in there. This is a really pivotal turn of combat. Geordie's not that far off breaking, and he starts off by losing two, three models in a row. And that is not what he wanted, because if he breaks, he's going to start to run, because his courage isn't as good as the elves, and he doesn't have any might to keep his stand fast going, so it would just come down to priority. And last fight is Rutabi fighting two, and they will fight it because you're only on one wound. You get the six. I've got a four, but my mana pushed back, hopefully into range. Looks like it. So Rutabi on the six. Yes. Can I get a six to force a roll off? No. That's <laughs> so a four. It goes to a four. It's, it's, pretty... it's an angle? Okay. All right. It's been called an angle. I think it's an angle. And needing a six here, no, not no, enough. No. So it's can Rutabi four. take him down? Uh, Rutabi strikes, needing cheeky fives. That's and then one of them. friends one. needing cheeky fives as well. No, just Which just one, one did you wish to kill? Uh, good question. Yeah, good question. I think the outside guy. Yep. Sorry, I'm dropping all of my metal. Blokes onto your Nautimus. At the end of the turn, you can see there's not many Easterlings on the board, but they're still not broken. One more to break them, and three more to break the Elves. Priority has just gone to the Easterlings, so Geordie's move here really needs to keep that objective and not let these Elves through. So, awkwardly, I actually did want to break last turn. Um, if I had 13 dead Easterlings, the game might end this turn on a one or two. But because it keeps going, uh, David gets essentially a whole extra turn to try and manoeuvre into that middle section. 
Geordie's objective now is to keep the center of the board safe. If he can do that, he's gonna win this game. The courage test to charge into Caliborn. Let's see it, Geordie. Uh, I'll go with the Black Dragon first. So Courage 4, loves it. Makes it in. Brave boys today. Yeah. And if that one Black Dragon gets slammed by Caliborn, that could be the one that breaks you. On the off chance that the game, I can actually kill anything this turn, let's figure out where six inches is. There. Got it. So I need to be on that side of that line. This guy is going to be really spooky at him. Guy behind him. Yep. Oh, hey, spoiled. it's a third one. So he's just going to wander off this way. Yeah. Uh, and then this guy is going to just, let's see, it'll be one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, so we can get over there next turn just because I have really bad luck when it comes to actually jumping over things. So sending as many guys for that objective as possible. Uh, this guy is going to try it, just to try and redeem my army from last time I played with them. Leap! Yes! And on a five, uh, he'll do success. it. The glory. And this is our board after the movement phase. The game is definitely coming to the pointy end. That's going into the combat phase, where it's just going down the line again. And there's one <laughs> But Banner we'll take it. Taken down, finally. Jesus. Alright, nice one. I got two Rutabi. nice. Rutabi. This is Rutabi. Cheeky three. I got a five. Friends. Cheeky three. And Banner. Cheeky one. Alright, so if you put a wound on Rutabi, she could go down here. She's got one wound, What's one strength fate. Strength three. What's her defense? Two fate. Two fate. Seven. Yeah, strength three. Come on, lads. And oh! that's a wound. Alright, she's got two fate. I hate rolling once at one at a time, because you know it's going to fail. But here we go. Failed the first no one. No one's gonna fail. If I just they would have both passed. And Jeez, on a man. one, Rutabi no. taken down. And that will break the Easterlings as well. Break them in style. <laughs> that's pretty That's pretty bad. And at the end of the combat phase, we can see there's a lot less Easterlings there. Rutabi died, followed by three more Easterlings. Now, at the start of this next turn, Geordi will be broken, so it could potentially be the last turn. All right, that goes into priority. Three. Oh, no. three to three, so that goes to the elves. All right, that's exactly what David needed. So let's see this movement first. Dang. Okay. Caliborn has one will left. Amdo has none. Caliborn will attempt to transfix Amdo. He does not. He does not. So he is out of will. Uh, but I think we just have to fight him anyway, because I got to keep him off the objective. Uh, is he terrifying? Nah. Brilliant. Add him, lads. So leader on leader, it's exactly what Armdress specializes in, but they're both out of might, so we'll see. Okay, uh, this fellow can see this fellow yeah. while being within six, we'll charge him for glory. Very good. Uh, we'll charge this fellow here, again, glorious. So end of goods movement phase, Armdress is trapped and there's elves within six of the center of the board. George has got to pass some courage test to see if these guys stick around. Oh. What? That came undone very quickly. Uh, I'll go the regular gentleman at the back there. He is good to go. He's passed on an eight. And he'll probably just charge in the back there. Black Dragon's at the back here. The one closer to you, Jacob. All good. He's still alive. He'll just move forwards. And then yep. the other gentleman passes. Yes. Passes thanks to his Black Passed Dragon one. upgrade. And as we can see, there's not many Easterlings left, nor Elves at that fact. There's two more Elves that need to die for them to be broken as well. So let's see this combat phase. Um, I figure Amber's trapped, so we've got to start there. All right, um, leader on leader. Cool. So, Caliborn. We'll faint, but fight single-handed. And I've got two pikes. 53. I've got the sixes. So do you count as a banner for yourself? I do. Okay, All right. roll it then. You're fight seven. No, I'm fight six. six. Yeah. Oh, that's a joke. I'm an elf lord, I'm fight six. Hey, right. and it's drawn. Six. I do have the blade, you've got no, the blade. Have the blade. So both of them have an elven blade. All right, on a one, two, or three, it goes to these things. Four, five, six goes to good. Let's go, Amdo. Let's My see boy. it. Come on. The glory. Come on. And ah, good side. It goes it's to the good side. Abdur's in trouble What's in there. Defense? Six. And one of my orange dice went in there. I didn't see which, so I'll throw another one. Uh, we're currently on lethal anyway, but let's see what we got. And I can reroll one from Lord of the West. <laughs> one, two. Is that only three wounds? Oh, is the five not a? There's yeah. a six there. Oh no, there's. Okay, sorry. Uh, no, they were they were strength three, so that's yeah, only sorry. three wounds. All right, so, all right, a fifty-fifty for Abdur to survive. We've done well on fate so far. Hey, <laughs> and nice. still alive. He two wounds, just and he's out of sight. Grievously wounded. And last fight oh, of the four. turn. I got a five. 
Are you hopelessly barrage? outnumbered. No, nah, I don't think so. East okay, in that case, lost fight. Uh, knocked down by the Pav, so I get this twice, where's it plus one? Yep. Got you on a seven. Yep. Um, and is taken down. On the roll of a one or two, game's over. It's oh, a two, wow. so the game has ended, and that will be in favour of the Elves. To me, it just sort of came down to that one big turn. If I held them off and we got the Natty one or two, I had a shot. Um, if the game kept going, David was definitely going to claw it. Or, as you saw, if six Eastlings died in one turn, David was also going to get it. So, well played to him. That, that did not go um, as I had expected. You throw enough dice, six has come up, uh, and the Gladrum are masters at throwing a lot of dice. Um, and if it's a simple numbers game, more dice at higher fight, uh, did it for me in the end. And that means David moves on to next round. The next game you'll see is Ents versus Dale. Make sure you stay tuned for that because it's coming out in a fortnight. Thanks for watching.